All right, this is the first lesson in trig. What we're going to be talking about today is the unit circle. So let's go ahead and get started. Here is a circle. The things that we can notice about this circle right off the bat is that it seems to be centered at the origin, here. One of the things that makes the unit circle the unit circle is the use of the word unit. And in this case, the word unit means that it has a radius of length 1. We go ahead and put up the equation. x squared plus y squared equals 1 is the equation for the unit circle. Every point on the unit circle satisfies the equation x squared plus y squared equals 1. If you remember the distance formula, this just says that the distance from the origin of all points is 1. And again, that's embodied here in the fact that the radius is 1. So if I go ahead, draw a new set of axes, and throw up a new circle, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about a bunch of things. One of the things we're going to talk about are some of the points that are actually on the circle. Another thing we're going to talk about is how we measure angles in the circle. Let's go ahead and start with angles. Whenever you take any line, starting at the origin and extending out, one thing you do is you make an angle. The angle that you make is measured first by starting in the positive x-axis direction. You then start counting in this direction until you hit the line that you just drew, and you call that angle theta. So let me go ahead and mark in red again. Here is the angle theta. So we can see that if we start in the positive x-axis direction, that's going to be angle 0. And I'm sure a lot of you guys know that a circle has a total of 360 degrees. So if we march our way around the circle, and we just keep going and we keep going, eventually our angle increases all the way up to 360 degrees. One of the most important things about trig, and that we're going to be learning throughout this, is that degrees aren't good enough. So we have that degrees are bad, and that radians are good. So, how many radians are in a circle? We have 360 degrees is equal to 2 pi radians. Let's talk about what that means. If I have 360 degrees equals 2 pi radians, then if I take the ratio 360 to 2 pi, and I reduce it and I get 180 to pi, what I have is that there are 180 degrees in every pi radians. What this allows me to do is it gives me hope to convert from radians to degrees. So if I take some amount of radians and I multiply it by 180 over pi, it's going to give me some number of degrees. Let's go ahead and try that. If I tell you you have pi radians and you multiply it by 180 over pi, well, the first thing that happens are the two pi's cancel, and what I'm left with is 180 degrees. So we just showed that pi radians equals 180 degrees. Let's do this again. Suppose I tell you you have pi over 3 radians, and you multiply it by 180 over pi. Well, the pi's cancel, and 3 goes into 180 60 times. So the correct answer is 60 degrees. Remember we said 360 degrees 
is 2 pi radians. Well, instead of converting from radians to degrees, since you're more familiar with degrees, you're more often going to have to convert from degrees to radians. How do we do that? Well, we wind up taking the same ratio inverted. So now instead of having 180 degrees to pi radians, we have pi radians to 180 degrees. So suppose you took 45 degrees and you wanted radians. You'd have to multiply by this conversion factor over here. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to multiply by pi over 180 and 45 goes into 180 a total of four times and so we're going to get pi over 4 radians. Let's try one more time. Suppose we had 90 degrees and we multiply by our pi over 180. Well, 90 goes into 180 two times and so what we're left with is pi over 2 radians. Let's look at how angles sit on our unit circle. There's our circle. And remember that we said over here in the positive x-axis direction we have a total of 0 degrees. So we also have 0 radians. Now, the entire circle is 360 degrees, a quarter of that is 90 degrees, and remember that the angles increase in that direction. So when we do a total of 90 degrees, wind up facing straight north, we end up over here. And remember, we just calculated that was pi over 2 radians. And we keep marching. Another 90 degrees gives us a total of 180 degrees and that's equivalent to pi radians. One more time. Down here we have a total of 270 degrees, which is 3 pi over 2 radians. Now, what happens if we keep going? If we go one more time, we should add another 90 degrees. If we add another 90 degrees to 270, we get 360 degrees. And if we add another pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2, we get 2 pi radians. This is really important. 2 pi radians and 0 radians face the same direction in much the same way 0 degrees and 360 degrees face the same way. If you had a friend and you wanted to tell him where to turn and where to start walking, if you told him to turn 360 degrees and start walking, you could have just told him to start walking. That's illustrating the point that there are multiple angles which end in the same direction. So once again, let's take our unit circle. Now that we have an idea about angles, let's go ahead and talk about points. I'm going to drop down my circle one more time. Remember, because it's the unit circle, the most important thing that you can remember is that it has a radius of 1. The line starting at the origin and ending over here in the x-axis direction also is a radius and so also has a length of 1. That'll help us label the point over here. The point over here is 1 comma 0. If we go north, the point is going to be 0 comma 1. Over here in the west, we're going to have negative 1, 0, and down here in the south, we're going to have 0, negative 1. Those are these four points, respectively. Those are really important, and they're going to come into play much more during the next, uh, the next section, but for now it's important to remember that we do know four points on the circle. We also remember that x squared plus y squared equals 1. I'm telling you that this is incredibly important. You can't possibly ever forget this about the unit circle. Let's suppose we have one of the coordinates. In particular, let's suppose 
that we have the x-coordinate one-half. If I go back to the picture here, one-half is going to be halfway between. Here is the line for x equals one-half. If we know the x-coordinate is one-half, we're going to know that we're going to have to be on the circle on one of these two points. So how would we figure out what the values for y are for those two points? Well, if we go back over here, we see that we're letting x be one-half, and we have this really nifty equation sitting up here. Why don't we try plugging one-half into the equation? One-half squared plus y squared equals 1. 1 half squared is a quarter, plus y squared equals 1. That means y squared has to equal 3 fourths. So if y squared equals 3 fourths, we know that y then has to equal plus or minus the square root of 3 divided by the square root of 4, which is 2. So once again, let's talk about what we just did. We started with the particular coordinate, x equals 1 half. We plugged it into this equation. And then we simplified, solving for the remaining letter. We got y squared equals 3 quarters. And what that implied was that y has to equal plus or minus the square root of 3 quarters. The square root of a fraction is the square root of the top divided by the square root of the bottom. And so we get radical 3 divided by 2. And so our possible y values are radical 3 over 2 and negative radical 3 over 2. So what we just showed is that 1 half comma radical 3 over 2 and 1 half comma negative radical 3 over 2 are on my circle. So, with this method, if I give you any x or y coordinate, you can figure out the corresponding y or x coordinates for any of the points on the circle. That's going to become incredibly important as we move into sine and cosine in the next lesson. So the most important things I want you to remember right now, more than anything, is that if you draw your unit circle, you know a bunch of things already you know the values that work. Any x or y that you pick has to satisfy x squared plus y squared equals 1. Additionally, any particular value that you pick makes an angle. And remember, every angle starts in the positive x-axis direction. So there's always one line going in this direction, and the other line goes to your point. We always call those angles theta, and there are multiple angles which represent the same one, because whenever you go to the terminal edge of the angle, you could have also gone around a whole extra 2 pi more, or you could have gone an extra 4 pi more, or an extra 6 pi more, and so on. All of those angles end at the same point. So we have x squared plus y squared equals 1. The angles are measured a specific way. Many angles end in the same place. If I give you a particular value of x and y, you can plug it into x squared plus y squared equals 1 to figure out the corresponding x or y values. Let me just say one more thing before we leave. When you are on the unit circle, any x and y values for a point on the circle have to satisfy these equations. x and y values on the circle have to be between negative 1 and 1. If you go back to the picture of the unit circle, where we labeled the points, you can see here 1, 0 is the rightmost point on our circle. The right direction corresponds to the x-coordinate. Since that's 1, if we move any, pa any uh, further past 1, we'll be off the circle. So no x value can be bigger than 1. Over here on the left, our x value is negative 1. We can't have any x value less than negative 1. Likewise, the y values have to be stuck between 1 and negative 1 as well. Otherwise, you're going to be off the circle. 
these equations are going to be incredibly important as we move into the next section too. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap up. We're going to end the recording. Please go ahead and check out the homework assignment that I'm listing with this video as well. See you in class.